Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is your friendly neighborhood IT girl, Sierra here. And today, as you can probably tell, we are at my computer. You know, obviously we've got the good camera going. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this camera's not as great. So I apologize for the quality, but I wanted to show you guys a couple of websites that I think will help you get through university, specifically WGU a lot faster, um, or at least help you along in your journey. So uh, here we are, let's get into it. All right, guys, so welcome to my computer. Have a seat, stay a while. We are going to look at some websites here. The first one that you can see is already up. This is the Citation Machine. So, so clutch for everything that you do basically in WGU um, whenever you have to like write anything. This is the easiest way to go about it because I, I don't know about you guys, but I do not like looking up APA or MLA or any of those different formats of writing your references. So this website will do it for you. Um, and I will show you how that works right now. We'll go just back to the main page. These are already references that I've been working on for my um, masters, but here we go. We'll go here, click create a citation, decide where your citation is coming from. Let's click a website because that'll be easiest. Um, let's go ahead and say that it came from www.youtube.com, our citation that we are utilizing because <laughs> that's where citations come from now, I guess. So we'll click search. Usually somebody has already probably used the thing that you're trying to put a citation in for. So some sort of search will probably come up. This one makes no real sense to be using YouTube for citations, but somebody did it for something. So we're going to put that in there. It's got a URL already. It's got the website title. It's got the date that I accessed it, which is today right now. Um, you're going to have to put in the title, maybe the publisher, if you, you know, had some sort of publisher sponsor for this YouTube thing that you were somehow trying to cite, um, and the date that they published it. So we'll go ahead and put those in because it doesn't have the information for these things. So we're going to call this article, um, how to, and typically speaking, they lowercase everything, succeed at uni. And if it had some sort of author, we'll say it's me. I am the author. And we'll leave the rest of this stuff as is. So that's the information that it did not have. Like I said, most of the time for books, for articles for a lot of web pages that are text-based. It will have all this information probably already in there. You may have to add a couple of little details, but all you do is click complete citation. It'll probably have you view and add because it is a free service. There we go. All right. So now I have my citation list. It's going to be added to the citation list. Again, if you had nothing up here, it would just be at the top but you'll see it's here in yellow. This is a new one that I just added. It says it's missing some info because again, this is pretend we didn't put in everything. But if you wanna use this for um, just a regular citation, you just wanna copy the one, you just do copy citation. You wanna use it as an in-text citation because you're quoting or paraphrasing or whatever somewhere within your paper, not just in the references section. Click this, it'll give you some options. If there's no date, no date because typically that's what you would put so and that would give you your in-text citation for that for APA 7 so then you just copy that and put it into your paper but this is the citation machine super useful for all of your papers save yourself a little bit of time if you want to put all your references in here then you can just copy all of them at the end and pop them into your reference page of your paper and then you don't have to do all this nonsense um or I shouldn't say nonsense all this extra all this extra. <laughs> so that is our first website. All right, moving straight on. We're going to go because when you go to most universities, if you're studying tech, coding, anything like that, software development, computer engineering, computer science, um, usually you'll have to do a web development course and you'll start with HTML. That's generally how most people start. You probably do web dev and then you move into the real language that you're going to learn. So HTML cheat sheet, here you go. Uh, you can go through here. It's got pretty much all the things that you need to just visually see really quickly in case you forgot the um, 
the word that you need to put in there or like the attribute or whatever it is that you're trying to put in the tag whatever this is just a quick cheat sheet that you can look at so you can figure it out and put it in there and this is through Stanford so you know they're smarty pants and they've got it all in here everything you need we also have one for CSS so if you're needing CSS to put some stuff together for your course I know specifically for WGU there is a course which is a web dev course and these are super useful for that um, so you, you guys, I'll put all the links for this stuff below so you can just click them and bookmark all these things if you're interested. Our next website is a little bit more in depth because when you're first learning how to code, you, this stuff is, it's a different language. Like that's what it is. It's just a different language. It's like me speaking French to you and you being like, um, what? <laughs> so this is how you can learn a little bit more. W3 schools is one of the most reputable places to understand concepts of what you are learning. So say right now we have it on HTML. You can see here at the top, it's got all the different languages. So whatever language you're having a question with. And to me, this is, this is better in a sense than um, Stack Overflow. I think I've mentioned Stack Overflow on this channel before because it's easier to understand. Stack Overflow is more so like when you have a very specific issue and you need help from other devs and they can help you, but you <laughs> kind of have to learn how Stack Overflow works because they can be mean to you. They were mean to me that my first time that I used Stack Overflow, they were like, you put too much information. Like we don't need all that information. Just like the most minimally replicable issue that you have, then maybe we'll help you. <laughs> and it's like, holy crap, guys, calm down. I'm sorry. Um, so this, this website is a lot more user friendly and um, just look for the thing that you're looking for. You can always just Google this and W3 schools will usually come up in like the top five Google links for whatever the issue is that you're looking for. But it has everything that you're pretty much ever gonna need to know and it'll show you how to utilize the thing in, in everything. So there'll always be some sort of examples so that you can understand. And then if you click, try it yourself, you can play with the code and then run it over here. So it's a little sandbox where you can change stuff um let's see and they do it it's not like regular you know web development where you have everything kind of sectioned out we've got a, a css style sheet you've got a html thing you've got javascript um pages it's all in one page so it's always that like you'll see the style inside the html or you'll see the script you know somewhere wherever the script needs to be it, it'll be like in there probably like here Actually. So it'll be like that within this section. It won't be separate pages. So to play with this, let's say we don't want to use pixels. Let's say we want to change this header to REMs. Let's see that. Well, let's say, so I guess, but that doesn't, I don't know if that's right. Try six. Okay, so yeah, REMs are working. So there you go. That's how that works and click out of here. It opens it in another window. So you can always just click back to whatever you were looking at so that you can continue on with your research, you smarty, smarty pants. <laughs> okay, so after that, we've got our Git cheat sheet. Um, Git doesn't come up that much in WGU. Actually, I don't think it comes up at all in WGU, honestly. I don't think I learned Git in WGU, but if it does, because sometimes things change, you know, if you're changing, you're growing, you're moving, you're getting better in your life. Um, and if it did change, then you can use this Git cheat sheet to use your commands that you need to, to know for Git. And it'll show you here, Git add, very, very common, commit, pull, push, all these things, super useful. Um, if you're working more so like fork and uh, things like that, these things will be more applicable. But this stuff is usually what you'll probably be using just as you're learning to use Git. I think these top ones are the most common. So this isn't an, an area where you can remember your Git commands. Okay, so hacker.io is a wonderful website for a variety of reasons, but one being that they have a really, really good Java cheat sheet. And because you only get the option of Java or I think it's C sharp or C plus plus. I can't remember. 
because I didn't choose it. So, but you only have really two options of languages to learn at WGU and I chose Java. So here is a Java cheat sheet. If you chose the other one, the C either sharp or C++, I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember which one it was, but um, I think they might have an option for that somewhere. Maybe, no, I don't see it here, but um, I'm sure there's an option for a cheat sheet for that somewhere. So here though, you have a lot of the things that you're going to need when you are working on, because you don't really get to the coding courses until the very end. If you go in the order that they set your program up in, you're kind of at the very end because you've got your, your, I think three projects to do in Java. Um, so here you can see, we'll start with our primitive data types, all these things. So you kind of just remember what they are. And it's got the default values, how they start off, and then how many bytes and bits and things that they are. Then you've got your non-primitive data types here. Typecasting, very important. Uh, <laughs> when you're learning, you do a lot of unintentional typecasting. <laughs> so this is something to kind of help you understand what that is. Because I remember I was doing my C++ project. That's the first one that you do, the first coding project that you do. And he was like, why, why do you keep, <laughs> like, you're doing this thing and you're, you got to typecast it to another thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? I do not understand what you're saying. Um, but then, so this is typecasting. So if you're working in a, a specific t uh, type of data and you need to make it into another type of data to do something else or to bring it into some other thing, this is typecasting. And you can see a little bit more about it here. You've got the operators. Operators, I think, are pretty simple. You know, they're basic, like they're basic math, more or less, except for a couple of things like the logical operators and assignment operators are a little bit different than normal things. Uh, conditional operators, obviously, increment and decrement are, I think, easy enough to understand. So these are just, again, a nice little overview of that. Then you have got a little bit about the commands in your IDEs, um, which I don't think you really, because most IDEs, you, you just push play. So you re don't really need to do those. You're not working in the command line for this these courses, but it's good to know. So it's good to know those things if you jump into those. Uh, variables, your favorite thing when you code are variables, I feel. And it tells you the difference. Here's a good thing, static variable. Long time static gave me some problems. I did not understand what a static variable was or like why it was important or why it was screwing me up 90% of the time. Like if you're <laughs> running your code and it, you'll see um, the error of, a st what is it like? non-static method cannot call a static variable or something like that. Non-static method cannot call a static method, something like that. You'll see that you, if you've seen it, you've seen it. If you know, you know, it's that error. And so this will help you understand what that error is and how you can fix it. And you know, what, what that means, because when some, I remember one, one instructor tried to explain it to me and she, the way that she did it was so odd. She said, think of it as like a treasure chest. And she said, but it's not the real treasure chest. It's like if you had a wallet and the wallet accessed the treasure chest. And I was just like, this is such an abs, like just so an odd way of trying to explain this. It's not helping. It's not helping me. <laughs> but hopefully this helps you a little bit better if you're confused. Uh, reserved words. You got to know them because you can't use them again when you're like, you can't have, uh, let's say you have an abstract class, you've made an abstract class and then you call your class abstract. It's like, you can't do that. That's not, it's a no, 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 no. Let's see here. Methods. Very, very important. You're going to start to do methods after you get through the real basic classes of coding, you start to utilize methods with parameters and all sorts of different things. So this will help you kind of understand methods a little bit maybe and here we have conditional statements always fun if else statements you can put those in here like if something is this else it's this and then you know within that 
other things happen. If it's this, you want something to happen here. Else, it's this, and you want something else to happen. That is, that is the opposite, usually. But that's the if-else conditional section. So you can go through this, and it's got all sorts of nifty things. It's very long, so I guess I won't spend the whole time going in there. Polymorphism, though, very good definition here, because in the capstone, I think it is, for the um, software development BS, you have to include polymorphism in your capstone. And you, you know, to include it, you kind of have to understand what it is. And they, they gave us a video course where there's a whole section on polymorphism. But to me, it was a, it was a, it was just overkill. It was, it was just overkill, honestly. So this is a little bit more concise and uh, hopefully makes it easier to understand. Uh, but that's, those are the big things I think that are helpful in here. Uh, otherwise you can, you know, kind of just go through this at your leisure and see if there's anything that is useful. So moving on, we have another cheat sheet for our Java and this one is a lot more condensed. So this is the Ed Eureka one and it has pretty much everything that you need to it has everything that you need to know to code. Like it doesn't really explain anything so much, but it gives you very, just what you need to put in the code. So uh, like, here we go. We've got a Fibonacci series. We've got a pyramid pattern. Ooh, excuse me. So Fibonacci series, pyramid pattern. And uh, we've got iterative statements, like how you do the different iteration things. Again, the kind of for loop, while loop, all those sort of things. Um, another thing in here that is very, very useful is the string methods here at the bottom. Ooh, no, not all of that, just this. String methods here at the bottom. So if you need to do basic, kind of like basic things, because all these things you don't know, and they don't really, they don't really teach you them outright in, um, in the classes, as far as I remember. But I remember I learned most of these through a separate course that I took, you know, when I was pre-gaming my education. I talk about that a lot. But when I was pre-gaming my education, I learned most of these things. However, if you are not doing that, this is a nice little, again, cheat sheet to have so that you can just have these methods available to you to, to utilize. Um, another thing, because we did not use scanner uh at all when i took my bachelor's at wgu so i when i was looking at different things um like jet brains and i was going i was trying to go through those different follow along tutorials that they had there and they would always be talking about scanner like you know scanner scanner <laughs> equals new scanner whatever and i was just like what is this scanner so explain to me scanner because I need to understand the concept behind scanner and um, you know, it took me forever to figure out what scanner was because it just, they just used it and nobody explained it. But so here's what scanner is and scanner is just basically a way to get an input because we use, um, what is that thing? Scene builder. So we use scene builder and we use the inputs within scene builder. So you don't, you don't really use scanner in that, that same sense with that, but that is that. Mm, you've also got data type conversions here, useful, um, getting factorials, all sorts of all sorts of nifty little things that you might need to just eyeball all right here for your your perusing pleasure. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully that you enjoyed this content. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you did, and hopefully it helps you out in your university career particularly those of you who are at WGU, because I know that it can be <laughs> uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to find information or, or things that you need to succeed. So yeah, I will talk to you guys in the next one. And until then, bye.